Hello, my friends. My name is Raymond Giovanni. I wanted to make a comment on um, on Hispanics, my fellow Hispanics. I'm Puerto Rican, and, and Puerto Rican people, for, for those of you who, who don't know, we've been citizens of the United States uh, since 1917, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 17, 12, 17, one of the two. I think it was the Jones Act. Basically, they decided that they were going to give citizenship to all the territories uh, of the United States. Uh, people who, the places that the United States basically uh, got a spoil of war from the Spanish-American War. Um, one of them is Puerto Rico. Where, for those of you who don't know, the, you know, history of this, because there's a lot of misconception about how how the process of acquiring many of the territories of the United States happened. It was not through democracy or anything like that. It was at the, the end of a barrel of a gun. They basically shot their way in. They picked a fight. The United States government picked a fight with, uh, <clears throat> with the Spanish, with Spain. They knew that the empire, the, the Spanish empire was weak at that moment and they seized the opportunity and they uh, they picked a fight. And so and they beat him and they they took the 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 lands that, that were back then colonies of the of the Spaniards uh, and then submitted us into it was no liberation as they never left. They uh, established their military bases. They tried to change the their uh, our, our language that failed. Uh, so basically, um, people say, "Well, big deal, you know. You didn't change your, you know. We didn't, change, you know. You get all our protection and all and all of that." It was that's not so. Um, basically, the way it works is there are laws, there are shipping laws, that if you want to import anything to the United States territories, I mean, Puerto Rico being one of them, you uh, have to use a U.S. flag ship, a U.S. merchant marine. Which to say, okay, so big deal. Use the Merchant Marine. Yeah, the problem with that is it's three times more expensive than the competition, and we don't get to choose uh, competition. We cannot use. So basically, you have a captive market. We're talking about Puerto Rico of four million consumers. Not only that, you you get um, you get the um, you know, you're, you're if you don't get in any representation, we're not represented in Congress. Uh, we don't get a representative or anything like that. And people say, well, what about all the the, um, the food stamps and all that stuff? It's like, that's peanuts compared to what the United States government gets. We, it's been estimated, it's a rough estimate, that we we get in food stamps and, and, and allowances and stuff like that, we had like $4.6 billion. And we buy <clears throat> $76 I think from 73 to 76 billion a year. So imagine having a store that you put four million dollars a year into, and you get 76 76 million a year. It's really profitable. Uh, and not only that, you get you, you get an endless supply of of uh, people for for your armed forces and stuff. Uh, and you have to you have to register, and and in times of war with get drafted and all that stuff. Um, plus, there's uh, tax haven and tax sheltering for U.S. companies. Like, for example, uh, pharmaceutical companies, they come to, to Puerto Rico and they give uh, very favorable treatment. Um, they basically pay zero federal income tax and they repatriate. They screw you, too. If you're American and you're listening, they screw you, too. Uh, so the United States government is not not on your side. They're, they're an equal opportunity screwer. Um, fuckers. So, <clears throat> so they have, they get, they do repatriation of, of earnings, which means, let's say, Pfizer, the pharmaceutical company, has, needs to repatriate $100 million worth of income. So, they'll say that they'll make, they made the $100 million from production in Puerto Rico, and that will shelter them from, from paying taxes on those $100 million. Um, and, that's you're getting screwed on that one too so <clears throat> then they get a bunch of 
like if an engineer they can get an engineer in Puerto Rico for forty thousand dollars that cost them over here eighty thousand um, dollars. So people say, why don't you bring the, the the corporations to the mainland? So well, it, it doesn't make any sense because um, you're gonna you know if you had a business you're gonna take it to the place where you can don't have to pay taxes on your on your uh, revenue on your profits and you can get uh, some of the best trained engineers in the world which we have them in Puerto Rico uh, for half of the price so now most of the most of the top management and and the big wigs are American so uh, you know we, we are the Indians are the chiefs always been like that always will be so anyways I don't get all this, uh, I have a lot of people that are members of the Tea Party and stuff like that that are Hispanic, I know them, and it, that's, that's such a big oxymoron, the Tea Party has been uh, notoriously <coughs> uh, famous and, and for, for hatred of Hispanics. I hear a lot of Hispanic people, and Puerto Rican people, some people, um, touting or using terminology like illegal alien. That's a terminology designed as disparaging and derogatory <clears throat> towards uh, undocumented migrant workers. That's what they are. They're migrant workers. And all this talk about, oh, they're destroying our economy. It's, that's trash. That's, that's hogwash. That's not true. You know, Pedro picking tomatoes down in Texas has got nothing to do with what happened in the economy in this country. Um, <clears throat> what happened with the economy in this country um, was uh, a bunch of, of uh, Indians from Wall Street that they did a party down in Boca Raton with a bunch of blow and, and hookers and they designed a product called collateralized disbursement uh, I think it's obligation uh, CDOs and basically I'm not sure if that's a, the, the real term right now I can't pinpoint it but I, the, the basic term of this product is that <clears throat> they designed insurance, they, they sold insurance to ensure high, um, high, high profile, let's say, head fund um, investments. For example, they'll tell the, the head fund investor, investor or the head fund manager, look, I have a CDO here. This product will shelter your investments from collapse. So... If you have, <clears throat> if you have, you invest in this high risk um, part of your portfolio from your hedge fund, you invested in this high risk investment and it collapses, we got you, okay? We're going to pay for that. So it's basically gambling insurance. If I, that's the way I, well, I would qualify. What they did not tell the, <clears throat> and, and it's a very complicated formula that they use, but the basic premise is they use um, pools of mortgages to guarantee this insurance. So basically what the pitch they use is say, listen, this stuff, this insurance and this investment is backed by real estate. Now, as a rule of thumb, a lot of people consider real estate investment as foolproof because nobody ever thought that real estate could could go down drastically like it like it was it was always considered a very safe bet <clears throat> but the problem was is that the mortgages that they used to back up the securities or or to or this investments or the in the insurance this mortgages were subprime and a lot of them have been written by this hawkish uh, mortgage um, agents um, or brokers that were told by the banks to go ahead and give people three hundred thousand dollars when they can only afford a hundred thousand dollar home <clears throat> and they had shitty credit and all that stuff but guess what if you get somebody in front of you who pitches you this stuff and tells you don't worry about it we got you We've already figured this out. Sign it. Get your three hundred thousand dollar home. You're only going to pay it a hundred dollars for the first couple of years. Never mind. You're going to go up to three, four thousand dollars in you know in four or five years. But yeah, you'll be making a lot more back by then. <clears throat> go ahead and sign. So all this um, 
And then not only that, they took those mortgage, those mortgage pools, and they resold them in the in the market, the mortgage pool market, and they leverage those mortgages 35 to one in some cases. So imagine somebody telling you that you have a look. I have a safe investment here that uh, that cannot collapse. However, they're not telling you that they have that there's basically that that same hundred dollars that they're offering you to invest um, have been already lent 35 times okay so it's not worth really nothing it's already leveraged to the hilt it's got zero collateral value not only zero it's got negative collateral value and they're telling you that it's got that it's safe <clears throat> so it wasn't the the workers the one the the Mexican guy and the and picking tomatoes not even the Mexican guy um, doing the you know the two or three Mexican people doing the illegal stuff you know they want to the Tea Party want to uh, sell the the Mexican and the South American people as criminals to the people and it's it, it's it's nothing is further from the truth you know these people most of these people the vast majority of them all they do is work all they do is, is work and and they you know they buy food they um they buy uh, cars. They don't buy crap shit. When they go to the supermarket, they spend a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars every time they go. Then it's not like us. We go pick pick a few things and then go home. You know, it's not like that. They buy a lot of food and and clothing and cars and they pay uh, insurance and in everything. You know, they spend a lot of money. Multiply eleven million, eleven million people by let's say twenty dollars a day. You know, and see what number, uh, what number you come up with. You know, so that that's that's two hundred and some odd million dollars every day, every day, two hundred and some odd million dollars every day. So that's a chunk of change. <clears throat> now, what I don't understand is all these people saying, "Well, they're they're taxing our our." Uh, our healthcare system and they're they're using up the studies show that the people who go to the doctor the last are, are, are these people the 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 undocumented workers they they really don't want to go to the doctor they don't like it and that stuff is all but they come here just to have a kid across the border the anchor kid you know and it's like okay so somebody comes here to have a child <clears throat> to expose themselves to being separated from that child, you know? So most of the times, a lot of the times, what ends up happening is that those kids, you know, their mother or their father, they get deported and they take them with them because they're not gonna leave the child out and then, you know, and, and the cold, they take them back to Mexico with them. But a bigger picture would be, why, why is it that these people are willing to risk life and limb crossing a desert for three days or four days without, with barely any water, with one gallon of water um, and a couple of crackers or something and candy or whatever, um, why is that? It's because our, our foreign uh, policies <clears throat> suck. And we basically, uh, people say, well, can't blame the United States for everything. I say, well, if, you're, if your foreign policies have been of those of supporting uh, dictatorships around the globe, and these dictatorships uh, destroy people, especially your neighbors, um, you are partially responsible for the poverty and the destruction that these policies create. In the case of the Mexico, basically, all these people, and that's another thing, uh, in case you didn't know, half of Mexico, half of the United States belonged to Mexico, and it was not gotten by a treaty, or it was gotten through war, and the war did not, Mexico does not start that war. The United States started that, the government started that war. It was a <clears throat> unprovoked war, and it, for the sole purpose of, of stealing uh, half of Mexico. If you notice the names of, of uh, every every place in Texas and California, they're all Spanish names. Um, the names of many of the states, Montana, Montaña means mountain, Nevada, Nevada means snowy, Florida, Florida means flowery, and it's not Florida, it's Florida, means flowery. Um, Arizona, zona arida, a drive, arid zone. 
Um, you know, there are a bunch of names that, and because this country was basically half, half of this country was Mexican, and, and, and all these people, they're all, uh, you uh, you hear them talking they're like they're Christian. You know, these people are not Christian, man. You know, they say, oh, I'm a Christian, and the values that build this country, what values? This country was built on slavery, rape, and genocide. That's what, that's the, that's what built this country. Slavery, rape, and genocide. 400 years of slavery, the rape of all the, the uh, Aboriginal women, <laughs> genocide, the genocide of the of the Native American and the and the theft of their lands. So, so if you think you're you're advocating for uh, the values, the so-called values that built this country, you need to find another another country to to uh, to put those values high because the reality is that not that this one was not built with nice values. The people in it have been fighting to fix those mistakes for a very very long time, and I don't think. <clears throat> Um, going back to Nazi um, inspired rules like that that target um, a specific ethnic group is going to uh, fix the problem this hatred um, so if you are Latino and you're sponsoring this this uh, hateful you know it's you need to rethink that um, that, that tea, uh, tea Party uh, endorsement now the other thing I, I just uh, I want to finish with this is if you you think this, for instance this uh, uh, ten, bill 1070 measure in in Arizona me, meaning if you look like me like I look Latino dark skin like this the police can pull you over and ask for your documents what's the difference between that and Nazi Germany where if you look Jewish you could you could get pulled. What's next? Are they going to brand us? And people say, well, no, I'm Puerto Rican. I'm a citizen. They don't know that. Your kids are going to get pulled over. And here's another one. They keep messing with with uh, with all these people and trying to scare them out of this country, uh, the Mexicans and stuff like that. If you get in an accident on a, on a dark road and the only person that goes by is a Mexican undocumented worker on his way to work, you know, what are the chances of him pulling over and calling the police on you if he has to, if he has a fear of getting deported to his country? Think about that. That could be your kid who doesn't get a phone call or doesn't get assistance from a stranger because that stranger happens to be a person uh, who's being hunted, uh, hunted down by these people, by, by this uh, nefarious, evil uh, people from the Tea Party. So think about that. If you're Hispanic and you're trying to support these people, they're not supporting you, man. They hate you. To them, you're just another another spick. That's that's who you are to them. Um, so think about that.